Okay. Okay. In this video, we are going to be looking at the June 2014 FP1 paper, question one. We're going to look at parts A and B. Let's just have a quick read of the question. The complex numbers Z1 and Z2 are given by Z1 is equal to P plus 2i and Z2 is equal to 1 minus 2i. So those are our complex numbers that we're going to be dealing with in this question. But P is just some integer. Okay. The first part asks us to find Z1 over Z2 in the form A plus BI, where A and B are real. Okay, so that's the form we've got to find our answer and that's the form we've got to give our answer in. Uh, and it says to give your answer in its simplest form in terms of P. So we're going to have a P involved in our answer. That shouldn't cause us too much of an issue. Okay, so here's our complex number. Z1 equals P plus 2i and Z2 equals 1 minus 2i. We've been asked to find what Z1 over Z2 is equal to. Well, the first thing's first. It seems pretty sensible to replace Z1 by P plus 2i and Z2 by 1 minus 2i. So then we're actually working with it. Because if we just leave it as z1 over z2, obviously you can't work with it. Okay. Now, where do we go from here? Well, as a general rule of thumb, mathematicians aren't really a huge fan of fractions. I mean, they'll work with them if they have to. But if there's an opportunity to not work with them, then they're obviously going to take it. Okay. So... We want to try and reduce this into something that looks a little bit nice because at the moment we've got a complex number on the top, complex number on the bottom. We want to try and hopefully reduce this into something that either isn't a fraction or is a little bit simpler fraction to work with. And the way we do that is to multiply by what's known as conjugate. It's a standard mathematical technique this is. So if we've got a complex number, general complex number, usually expressed by z, where z is equal to a plus bi, then we can have its conjugate which is expressed with a bar over the top of the z. The a and the bi stay the same, but instead of having a plus here, we've now got a minus. Okay? Equally, the conjugate, if it was a minus bi, then the conjugate would be a plus bi. So basically, it's the opposite symbol to whatever we've got in here. So let's look at this. We want to try and multiply by the conjugate at the bottom. So it's 1 minus 2i, which means that its conjugate is going to be 1 plus 2i. And remember, whatever we do to the bottom, we also have to do to the top. Because effectively what we're doing here is multiplying by 1 because the top and the bottom both reduce down to 1. Okay, So we're just multiplying by 1 and anything multiplied by 1 is just itself. So this is a standard mathematical technique, multiplying by its conjugate. Let's look at what we've got then. We've got 1 plus 2i, 1 plus 2i, uh, 1 minus 2i, and 1 plus 2i. And then it's just a case of expanding that thing out. Okay, So let's look at the top first. We've got p times 1, which is p. Then we've got p multiplied by 2i, so that's 2pi. Then we've got 2i times 1. And then we've got 2i multiplied by 2i. So we're going to end up with 4i squared. Okay, happy. Then look at the bottom, same thing at the bottom. 1 times 1, minus 2 times 1, plus 2 times 1, 2i, sorry, times 1. And then we've got minus 2i multiplied by plus 2i, so that's going to become minus 4i squared. Okay. Right. Well, what we've got to remember here is that i is just the square root of minus 1. Okay. That's the whole point of having an imaginary number, because you can then take the square root of a negative number. Well, then i squared is just going to be both sides squared, right? So we square root minus 1, but then we square it immediately, so we're just going to end up back at minus 1. Okay, so i squared is going to be equal to minus 1. So now we can use this to try and simplify what we've got here. So this is going to be equal to p plus 2pi plus 2i. The i squared is going to reduce down to minus 1, so we're going to end up with minus 1 times 4, which is going to give you minus 4. And then on the bottom, we've got 1. Look here, we've got minus 2i and then immediately plus 2i. So those two things are going to cancel. Then we're just going to be left with minus 4i squared at the end. So i squared is going to give you minus 1, so it's going to be minus 4 times minus 1, which is going to give you plus 4. Okay. Let's do a little bit of simplification, because remember, the question's asked us to leave it in the form of a plus bi. Okay, so we have a real part and an imaginary part together. So we've got p, that's real. 2pi, that's imaginary. 2i, that's imaginary. Oh, but the minus 4 is real as well. So we've got p minus 4 is the real part on the top. And then we've got that added to 2pi plus 2i. I'm just going to factor out an i. Okay, so it's really clear to see that we've got a p minus 4 
and the 2p plus 2. Let's not forget the bottom though. This is all over 5. But what I'm going to do, because it's all over 5, I'm actually going to split it up into two fractions. So I'm going to say this is over 5 and this is over 5. Because remember, I mean, all over 5 is the same thing as saying the first thing over 5 plus the second thing over 5 as well. Okay, And that now is in the form of A plus BI. If you really wanted to, then you could write that A is equal to P minus 4 over 5. B is equal to 2P plus 2 over 5. But to be perfectly honest with you, that's not entirely necessary. Now, where are the marks? It's four marks in this question. There's going to be one mark for multiplying by its conjugate, because that's a standard mathematical technique that you really need to do. If you don't multiply by its conjugate, then you're sort of stuck on that first line. Okay, so just replacing them isn't enough. You have to then multiply by its conjugate to show this is the next step of how to solve this question. The next mark is going to be given by this thing here. Because you've shown that you've been able to expand it out correctly, that you've recognised that i squared is equal to minus 1. And so you've sort of simplified it down a little bit there. And then the final two marks are going to be in here. There's going to be one mark for getting the right answer at the end, you know, getting all the right numbers. And there's going to be the other mark for being able to leave it in the form that they've asked it in, which is a plus bi. Okay, so there's your four marks. Now let's look at part b. Given that the modulus of what we've just found, z1 over z2, is equal to 13, then find the possible values of p. Now, remember what modulus means. So if we have a complex number, a plus bi, then we can express this on an Argan diagram. An Argan diagram is a bit like a Cartesian coordinate, except the x-axis now becomes your real axis, and the y-axis now becomes your imaginary axis. So you have a complex number, let's call it z, and we can express that as a vector, moving from the origin to your point. Okay, And that can be then be broken up into a real part, A, and an imaginary part, B. Okay, And then just using Pythagoras, the length of this side here can just be expressed as the modulus of Z. Okay, So we know that the modulus of Z, all squared, or hypotenuse, is just going to equal to this side squared, Plus this side squared. Okay, and then we can simplify that down a little bit more just by getting the thing which you want, modulus of z on its own, just by taking the square root of both sides. Okay, well, we know that our complex number, if you like, is z1 over z2. Just treat it as one complex number, that's 2 over z, is equal to p minus 4 over 5 plus, what was it? Um, 2p plus 2 over 5 times r. Okay, so the modulus of this thing, is it 2? Modulus is going to be given the square root of the a, which is p minus 4 over 5, all squared, plus the b part, 2p plus 2 over 5, all squared, and then square rooted. Okay? And we know that thing is, we've been told in the question, that, that thing is equal to 13. Okay. So just expressing the modulus of this thing is worth one mark. And then setting it equal to 13 is worth another mark. So that's two marks out of four already. And we haven't really done any work. We just use the fact that the modulus of a complex number is equal to the a squared plus the b squared, all square rooted. Okay. So where do we go from here? Well, we want to find out what p is. Okay. So we're going to have to try and solve this thing p. So... This square root at the moment is just a little bit distracting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides by square both sides and that'll get rid of the square root. So we're going to end up with p minus 4 over 5 all squared plus 2p plus 2 uh, over 5 all squared is going to equal to 13 squared, which is 169. Okay. And then it's just a case of working from there. Now we've got a fraction all squared. Now remember a fraction squared from our laws of indices is just the same thing as square in the top and square in the bottom. So we're going to have p minus 4 all squared over 5 squared which is going to give you 25 plus 2p plus 2 all squared over bottom squared which is 25. That's all going to equal 169. Now remember, now remember similar to what we did before 
when we've got two fractions which are both being added together which are over the same thing then we can just put the whole thing over the same thing so we're going to hand up with p minus 4 all squared plus 2p plus 2 all squared all over 25 and that's all going to equal 169 and again I'm a mathematician I don't really like dealing with fractions so wherever possible I try and get rid of them so the way to get rid of this fraction this is the same thing as saying the top divided by 25 so in order to get rid of division we have to multiply so we multiply both sides by 25 and we get rid of this nice fraction so p squared 2p plus 2 all squared and then 169 multiplied by 25 I think we all know that's 4225 but if you're not sure you can always use a calculator Okay, and then it's just a case of working with these two brackets here. So we've got p minus 4 all squared. That's the same thing as doing p minus 4 times p minus 4. And the same thing with the 2p plus 2 all squared. So we've got 2p plus 2 multiplied by 2p plus 2. That's all going to equal 4,225. Okay, do a little bit more work. Uh, so we've got p squared. Expand these brackets out, p squared minus 4p minus 4p so it's going to be minus 8p plus 16 and then we got that added to 2p times 2p so that's going to be equal 4p squared plus 4p plus 4p so that's going to equal 8p plus 4 and that's all going to equal to 4225 keep going we've got now to try and collect together the like terms so we've got p squared and we've got 4p squared there so we're going to have 5p squared all together got minus 8p there and 8p there so those two things are going to cancel which is going to equal zero and we've got plus 16 and plus 4 there so we're going to equal plus 20 at the end 4225 let's take away 20 so 5p squared is going to equal 4205 and then let's divide by 5 so p squared and i think we all know that's going to equal 841 don't we if you don't again use a calculator that's another mark fiddling around with that quadratic it seems like a lot of steps just for one mark but actually it's what you've been doing for the past however many years anyway so there's nothing really demanding there so we've got p squared equals 841 but remember we want to find p so p is going to equal the square root of 841 which you plug that into calculator you get 29 out that won't get you the final mark though because if you look back at the question find the possible values it's a plural there's more than one value of p and remember when you take the square root of a number you can have both the positive square root and also the negative square root that will get you your final mark showing that there's two values of p so p is equal to plus or minus 29.